guys, what's going on? This is your old pal CHH. We got a cool physical media update. Most of these are Kino titles. I'm going to show you guys. I got some new titles in from them that I'm super excited to dive into. One of them I haven't seen before, but I'm going to talk about it and why it's important that this came out. Uh, but I got a few uh, interesting things I want to add. So I'm a big Charles Band fan, and I had ordered the Prime Evils uh, umbrella set, and my box came damaged. It wasn't the end of the world damage. Basically, a corner just looked like it was smushed in a little bit. Uh, and I emailed them, and I got to give them credit. They shipped me out a replacement box really fast, and this one's in perfect condition. So uh, kudos to Umbrella, I got to say. They are very uh, good with customer service, in my opinion. I haven't had any issues with them. So uh, they, they just said, hey, we're going to ship you out a replacement ASAP. So I got that pretty quick. Uh, especially coming from Australia. So cheers to them. Um, besides that, I want to show you guys a bonus thing. Uh, I thought about doing a, a whole separate video on this, and I still may, uh, talking about this guy, but I wanted to show this I got. This is the Angry Video Game Nerd, the BFG of Blu-rays. This is basically a big box set of the Angry Video Game Nerd, one of my heroes. This guy is one of the reasons I got into actual movies and uh, physical media and... 80s and 90s cinema, very important guy in my life. Some people watching this know exactly why this guy is so important, and some of the younger people may not know, and some people may not just be fans, but I wanted to get this because it's got all episodes from zero or one basically to 160 something with a bunch of special features and bonus stuff in here. So, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, he did episodes on Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, Halloween back in the day and Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street on Nintendo and Ataris. And they're incredible watches. So nostalgic for me to watch these. So, yeah, those are really cool. I love those so much. So I got that off of Amazon. But, guys, let's get into the um, Kino Lorba up updates. The first thing I'll show this is this. I did a review of this. It should already be up. But I've got uh, the 4K of uh, Van Damme's Sudden Death. I really like this movie. I uh, really like this 4K. And I described it in my review as the 4K on action films should look very, or they do look very, very cinematic and authentic. That's the best way to describe action films on 4K. And I think you'll notice that when watching this. So I do recommend this. Uh, obviously, Kino titles can be, a, they can feel pricey because they're very much just classy standard releases for movies, which I think some people actually really like the presentation of Kino stuff. So... There's that. Um, a few other things I want to show. Uh, my pal Kyle sent me this. Cheers to you, brother. Uh, this is a movie called Death Machine. This is from the Kino... Uh, no, this isn't the Kino cult line. I thought it might have been. Uh, but yeah, this is a movie called Death Machine. The year is 2003. Shank Industries, ruthless world leader in future weapons technology, hire a new chief executive, Hayden Kale. Kale soon uncovers a secret and unethical weapons project the company is involved in. Her first order of business is to shut it down. Her troubles begin as she tries to fire the company technological mastermind Jack Dante, a childlike psychotic with a dark genius for exotic weapons designs. So, well, very cool. And clearly, Brad Dorff looks like the nut job in this movie. And, I mean, of course, right? Uh, this is from 1994. Uh, three cuts of the film. The 100-minute U.S. cut, the 122-minute foreign cut, and the 106-minute director's cut. Two audio commentaries, audio, four audio commentaries basically on here. Five separate on-camera interviews with composer Crispin Merrill, editor Paul Ed Ednicat, costume designer Stephanie Calley, producer Ray Burtis, and co-producer Stuart St. Paul. Two image galleries, three trailers, and more. So yeah, very excited to watch this. And this is a Blu-ray. This is a Lionsgate title that uh, Kino got the license for. So very, very cool. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. So that's that. Let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this movie is amazing. I, I uh, bought this and watched it. And I, I meant to do a video on it, but I never did. But I will say, uh, Turbulence. I got the Blu-ray release for Turbulence. It's also got a 4K. So, I'll talk to you guys about this real quick. First of all, Turbulence is a Ray Liotta film. Rest in peace, Ray Liotta. I miss him. One of the greatest movie stars, in my opinion, of latter day. I, I think Ray is very... He was very versatile. He could do whatever he wanted to in movies. And he was a great character actor. And just a great actor in general. Anyway, this is a movie about serial killers on a plane. 
where they hijacked the plane. This was obviously pre-9-11, so that kind of subject matter is not something you really see anymore. Uh, but this was 1997. Good movie. This has a 4K, but I'm not try. I'm trying not to do so much 4K stuff with Kino because it, I feel like my I can get the better deals more times than not on the Blu-ray stuff. And a lot of if it's the 4K scan of the Blu-ray, I'm kind of doing that with Kino, not because I think they don't do a good job on 4Ks, because sometimes I will get the 4K. But if I can save money and get a really good deal on the Blu-rays, and it's the same presentation, it's got the slip covers and all that, same bonus features, same scan, I'm kind of doing that. So, yeah, uh, Turbulence was really good. I really like that movie. Uh, next up, this I did pick up the 4K of because I don't know if it had a Blu-ray from Kino, so this might not even been an option for me. But uh, I did pick up Hannibal. I got a really good deal on Hannibal, very, very cheap. Uh, now I've got the uh, Hannibal trilogy from uh, Kino. I've got Hannibal, Silence of the Lambs, and Red Dragon. I think they put Hannibal out first. But uh, I did watch this, and this looks really good. This is my least favorite out of the three, I think. But I feel like somebody will watching this is going to say, Christian, you got it all wrong. Like, Hannibal is the second best, it, clearly. I think most people would say it's silent. Some, somebody might say they like Hannibal the most. I like it, but to me, it's just like he's the scariest, and the series is at the best when he's behind the glass, that sort of thing. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Good movie, though. This is when uh, Julian Moore was just, like, in everything. Julian Moore was literally in every movie. You couldn't escape her, it felt like. Uh, not that she was a bad actress. I don't mind seeing her. But, yeah, Hannibal Man, uh, this is a good one. Uh, th this is pretty cheap now because it's been out for, I think, four years. I wish I had gotten it sooner because I don't have a slipcover for it. And uh, most of my Kino stuff has slipped, so I'm a little OCD on that. I try not to be, but it's tough. So, guys, I got a stack of movies right here I got from Kino. Let's go over these. So, I did pick up Happy Birthday to Me. I upgraded this. I had the old Mill Creek version. Uh, and everybody told me that, hey, Christian, get the uh, get the Kino version. It's better. Uh, so, I'm excited to watch it. This. this is a Blu-ray. I don't know if they've done a 4K for this or they're going to do a 4K. But uh, I think most people love this movie, Happy Birthday to Me, right? Like, what's not to love about Happy Birthday to Me? So, really cool. Yeah. Uh, what year was this? 1981. And this is actually all region, by the way. So for all the people across the pond watching this, if you want to pick this up, it does in fact say, uh, region A, B, and C. So that's really cool. So yeah, really nice. Uh, it's got audio commentaries by co-screenwriter Timothy Bond, moderated by historian and filmmaker Daniel Kremer, sister slasher interview by actress Tracy Bregman, TV spots, radio spots, and theatrical trailers. So yeah, there's that. I'm very excited to watch that. Next up, guys, so I've been wanting to own this movie on high definition for so long. This did get a 4K, but um, Kino's other release, Kino's other uh, deep sea movie that they have only had a Blu-ray, and I wanted to match it for some weird reason, and I got it such I got this for $14.99 on Amazon, which is insane. Uh, just insane. So why not? I got Leviathan. On Blu-ray with the slip and everything, which is cool. Um, <clears throat> and I am so excited to uh, I'm so excited to watch this. Now I, okay, yeah, brand new HD master from a 4K scan of the 35 millimeter interpositive. So if some people don't know why they use interpositives, from what I understand, the interpositive is close to the negative. It's not the negative, but it's close to it. And I think the reason that they use that is. It is good source material to work from. I think you could probably do some... There probably is some 4K scans from interpositives that you would never know otherwise because they look so good. Uh, it depends on the quality of the interpositive and things like that. But they use that sometimes when the master is just not available. Uh, so, I mean, it's good that interpositives are, are being stored still and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about this. This is a great deep sea uh, underwater movie. There's the big three. There's Leviathan, Deep Star 6, and, of course... Um, the James Cameron movie, The Abyss. I think Deep Star 6 is the best out of the three, but I'm super excited to rewatch Leviathan. It's been a long time. I have a DVD of it, but to see this in HD is going to be amazing. Uh, so I'm very, very, very excited about this. And I do like, I'm being a little, uh, I'm being a little uh, ridiculous here, but I do actually like how the slipcovers on the Blu-rays 
just have the artwork totally on there. I know some people that actually bought the Monster Squad 4K and then bought the Blu-ray version and put the Blu-ray slip over their 4K because they don't like... Uh, they don't like... Let me see. They don't like the banner at the top. I mean, I... I, I I, I, get, I can understand that, but I would not buy the movie twice. I would just suck it up. That's why I would draw the line there. I'm not double buying movies, that's for sure, just to swap out slipcovers. But uh, I am excited to watch my uh, Blu-ray of this. Just got this and super excited about that. Uh, next up, guys. So this movie I can't recommend enough. It's slept on. People refuse to watch it. Uh, they've told me they know about it, but they don't watch it. It's It's a crime. This is the new Kino Cult, uh, Kino Cult line. This is number 12. I have not kept up with the Cult line. I'm just getting stuff from them that I'm interested in. It's really that simple with me with Kino because uh, they do put out a lot of stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's tough. You got to wait for sales and things like that. But anyway, Frogs, man. This movie is so effing good. I'm a huge fan of this. Funny story, this was the first movie on DVD my family ever bought. Uh, and it scared the hell out of me. Frogs is about Sam Elliott, who plays a uh, wildlife photographer who gets knocked off of his canoe. And the people that did it say, hey, come with us. We'll bring you back to the house where you can dry off. Well, he goes over there. And basically, when he goes to this house, it's this yuppie white family that has um, <clears throat> all this money. They're in this mansion. And like the old man is this mean old man. He's grumpy as hell. And long story short... The wildlife around this house starts to, like, try to attack all the people. But the thing is, this is the 70s. There's no CGI remotely. So there's these big-ass frogs. There's snakes. There's, uh, I think, what are those? Those Komodo dragon things that are in this movie? It is all real animals. And it is creepy. So if you're afraid of all that kind of stuff, this will get you. I swear the frogs in this movie are the size of a damn pumpkin. Big ass frogs. Love this movie to death. Creative kills. This is a great nature on a muck movie. Please check this out. People sleep on this movie and it kills me. I'm so happy that uh, uh, I'm so happy that Kino did this. Uh, this was a double feature in uh, from Scream Factory with another title that I forgot. I don't remember what it was, but uh, I'm excited about this. This has an audio commentary with film historian David Del Valle and film historian Dan Marino. Interview with actress Joan Von Ark. So we got a new interview, which is great in theatrical trailer. It's PG from 1972, but I don't think there was... <sighs> Was there was it there, there had to be R rating, but there wasn't a PG thirteen at the time. This would have been PG thirteen for sure. But don't let that fool you. This movie will freak you out if you're afraid of animals, especially amphibians. You know. So this is the next one. I'm super excited to watch, guys. I haven't gotten to watch it yet, but I'm gonna make this a priority. This is from 1976. One of the most legendary out of print Scream Factory titles. It went out of print very fast. Kino finally got it. This is Kino Cult uh, number 13. Uh, this is Squirm. I'm so happy to have this. I've been wanting to own Squirm for so long. Let's read a little bit about Squirm. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, and to the ravenous intent they leave no doubt. A truly frightening account of an infestation of biting worms. Squirm is guaranteed to make you do just that. With a powerful storm knocks Fly Creek, Georgia's power lines down on a wet soil. The resulting surge of electricity drives large bloodthirsty worms to the surface and then out of their soil ticking minds. I'm I gotta stop right there. I'm hooked. Uh, and this is a seventies film, this is gonna be great. This this has Roger Corman written all over it. Was he involved in this? No, I don't see his name on here. Wow. I don't see his name, but yeah, this is great. I love that slip. Look at that artwork. Sometimes it pays to wait, guys. I wanted to get this from Scream Factory, but uh Kino got it for us. Nineteen seventy six, Squirm. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. So I'm excited to watch that. And last but certainly not least, I picked this up on 4K, guys, uh, because I watch this movie so often, and I think 70s movies look sensational in 4K. Uh, this is one of the greatest movies, I think, of the decade. I really do. Uh, I'm talking about Death Wish. Uh, Death Wish, man, this is... It's been said before, you know, I think I think the director, Michael Weiner, actually directed the sequels, but the thing about Death Wish is it really is a movie that, that makes you think. Because um, what's, what's, uh, what is uh, Charles Bronson's character name in, in this movie? 
uh, it's funny because on the back, Paul Kersey, Paul Kersey, okay, I have to say it. Paul Kersey's character really isn't a gun person in the beginning. You know, it's it's not a movie that's shoving a political statement down your throat. It just makes you think. You know, Paul Kersey's his character is a good guy. He's kind of just like a happy look, go lucky guy until in the city, shit hits the fan. Jeff Goldblum and some other hoodlums do horrible things to his wife. He gets a gun and he's going to start, you know, taking matters into his own hand, being becoming a vigilante. Uh, and he realizes maybe you need guns to protect yourself. Maybe you have to protect yourself because you can never stop the crimes of the world. Doesn't matter what happens. You know, people that are criminals don't obey the law. So, you know, you have to play by their rules, not 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 everybody else's. You know, it's kind of like in Cobra, like where he says, you know, as long as they can play by their rules, we have to play by ours. We'll never win. We have to play by their rules, which is no rules. Uh, but it's a movie that makes you think. It's a movie that makes you think, and it's a good movie. Uh, there are some really great moments in this, and I think Death Wish is one of Charles Bronson's best films. He's done some great stuff. Um, the Evil That Men Do is another one that I like. Uh, but yeah, really love this movie. This is an audio audio commentary with film historian Paul Talbot, the author of Bronson's loose book, interview with actor John Herzfeld, theatrical trailer. We did not get uh, Jeff Goldblum on this. But yeah, I was so happy to get this, guys. Charles Bronson's Death Wish. This is one of the best movies to me from the 70s. I love it. Uh, 1974, man. There's only other one person that could have played this part and done a good job, and that's Sylvester Stallone. And another timeline, if if Death Wish had been made five years later, I think Stallone could have done it because he didn't break till 76. But anyway, yeah, Death Wish is an amazing film. I'm, I'm so excited to watch this 4K. What can I say? It's Death Wish, man. Yeah, look at that poster, too. That is great. That is sensational, guys. So there you have it, guys. That's my new update with everything from Kino, and I'm excited about watching some of those. So let me know your thoughts on those. If you're going to pick any of those up, please watch Frogs. It's good. It's good. Thank you guys for watching. God bless y'all. See y'all next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.